the, the entry, the level to entry is very, I'd say easy into the social. It's just really more or less being consistent and being active like you guys are saying. But on the flip side, what are things that people should not absolutely do? I think that we don't do ourselves any good in like posting like braggy posts about like selling homes and things like that. I, like most people think that real estate agents drive fancy cars, sell a house, go to happy hour, collect a big check, and then do it all over again the next day. Most consumers don't care if you've sold 200 homes. They if somebody looks at your page, or at least this was my perspective, you know, they see a lot of different educational sort of informative videos about the sale process, the buying process. How do you usually schedule that content? I just write down conversations, ideas, content that I see that I like. And I, I just write down like what I just named off are like literally videos I'm gonna shoot tomorrow of like things that I read in a magazine, you know, things that I'm seeing on InMin. Like there are so many places out there that give you content ideas, right? World-class lessons from the real estate industry's top 1%. Empowering agents to think bigger and do more to create life by design. Get access to exclusive interviews with top producing real estate professionals. Listen in as we talk about their journey in the business, best practices and lessons learned. Hosted by Kiro Nasrala and John Scipioni. You mean one thing that we always say in our office is just action is better than perfection, right? This is Light It Up with Lighthouse Residential. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Light It Up Podcast. We are super excited to have with us Miss Katie Day out of Houston, Texas. Katie runs a team of uh, approximately 15 agents, and that team is on track this year to do close to 200 transactions, representing nearly $100 million in total sales volume. Katie, thank you so much for, for spending some time with us today. Really hey, appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm of excited course, to be here. Of course. I was telling Katie before that I was fangirling a little bit uh, just because I was going to blow your spot up and say that. So I was blushing. I took, your, <laughs> I took your line there. That was my strategy. So, uh, no, I've followed Katie for a long time now on, uh, on social media and uh, have been a huge fan of the content you've been putting out. Uh, you've actually probably inspired me to do more and more on our end. Um, Kiro and I were sort of secret agents for a long time, doing a lot of business, but just not telling anybody about it. So uh, this podcast has helped us uh, sort of get out of our shell a little bit and, uh, you know, just just get out there a little bit more and and try to collaborate with different people like you. So we're super excited to have you here today. I think a lot of people will certainly be excited to see your name and uh, learn a little bit more from you today. So thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So we will jump into our lightning round just to break the ice a little bit and get uh, get to know each other a little bit better. A lot of the guests that we do have on here, we know from some, you know, some sort of facet, uh, whether it be through coaching programs or other people in our industry or other people, I should say, you know, in our market. Um, but Katie, you know, we don't really have a, much of a backstory with you. So we're excited to, <laughs> to break the ice here. All right. I'm ready. Kiro's going Nervous. first. All right. So there's a couple of weird questions in here. So forgive me. Um, I think they're all weird. I actually really like these. All right. So if you had Great. to obtain a million dollars illegally, by what means would you do so? <laughs> Man, we're just going to like dive right into breaking the law. This is yeah. fun. Do not sell marijuana to my husband. <laughs> um, illegally raising a million dollars. God, that's a difficult question to answer when in real estate, that's something that you can accomplish legally. <laughs> but um, I would say I would probably, I wouldn't physically do it, but I would figure out some way to orchestrate like drug deals. <laughs> okay. Orchestrate. I like that. Yeah. That's like good, I would be, I would be like word. the person behind the curtain, right? Like I wouldn't mm. actually deal the drugs. I'd make it happen. <laughs> awesome. There. Two minutes in, I've already committed a crime. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> what is the most unusual gift? you've received unusual gift i feel like um so i'm expecting a child in february and people have been sending like gifts um and we hadn't yet published our registry so people are just sending like things um so we've gotten like baby shoes uh because i like sneakers right and like uh just random things that like have been helpful for other people with kids and like since i have not yet had a child um i feel like a lot of these things i'm just like all right wonderful I'm going to put this in the closet with other things that like <laughs> will be hopefully useful to me. Um, so yeah, that's probably like the, the most recent and oddest yeah. stuff I've received. Well, congrats. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. 
All when right. do you do? Uh, February. Congratulations. That's awesome. Awesome. So yes. Katie has a very extensive sneaker collection. Are you I'm like a Jordans jealous. or a Nikes fan? Yes. Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good answer. Um, all right. What topic, do, uh, ironic, what topic do you know more about than anyone else in a room? Oh, um, I don't think sneakers would be the answer there. Um, and I think real estate's just like a cop out. I think like Houston food is something that I feel very strongly about. Like I love to eat and I love sharing like information about like Houston restaurants and stuff that's opening and I try to stay up to date on that. So mm. I think that would be like my next, my next thing. I'm just curious cause I've been to Houston for my buddy's bachelor party and it was probably like the worst bachelor party ever. Uh, where would you <laughs> recommend to go eat in Houston? Because there was, uh, I was a little biased after I was like, I'm never Kiro's, going back. Kiro's to a foodie. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah. Like the reason why I'm saying this is I believe that the best tacos in the world or in the country is in New Jersey. Um, in a place called Taqueria, they should totally sponsor this. Um, but they have the most amazing quesadillas and awesome tacos. Um, and I was surprised that Texas uh, was a disappointment with the Mexican food. Well, you probably got taken to like the very Americanized, like, you know, we have like Torchy's tacos and Velvet Taco and stuff like that, that like you go get drunk and then get that after the bars. And like, you know, it's great food at, at 2 a.m., but like it's not like tacos, tacos. Um, we have Tex-Mex, which is obviously different than like Mexican food. So there's a lot of good Tex-Mex, but you have to go to specific ones. Like so the original Ninfas and El Tiempo were the best ones. All the others are like, OK, yeah. and just stuff like that. So with, with a large group, you probably got taken to like the not so great places. So. We'll figure out some reason for you to come to Houston, yeah, uh, right. maybe over the next few minutes on this podcast. That'd be great. And um, I'll give you some like legit recommendations to hopefully redeem Houston in your mind. I'd appreciate that. Thank you, Katie. So, yeah. What you got, John? All right. I got one more for you. And it's in line with food because we're on that topic. Mm. How long can food be on the ground and still be fair game for eating? Easy answer. <sighs> we won't judge you. Be what kind of? I, like not to what kind of ground though like at the floor of a restaurant or like my house that's like, a fair question let's say your house my house like maybe like 30 seconds or something i obviously yeah. it wouldn't take 30 seconds for me to pick it up but like in a restaurant if i drop it on the ground it's gone i'm not yeah. eating it i would agree you know? with that. like public place I, it's it's on the floor there's no five second rule for me but like at home <laughs> the five second rule would definitely apply awesome so. awesome all right. Well, these questions are getting more and more ridiculous. Yes. And <laughs> we appreciate you for partaking in our childish games here. It was perfect. But now let's get into the fun stuff. We, again, wanted to have you on here because we think you're doing an excellent job uh, creating content, real estate focused content. Uh, specifically, what I've noticed from my perspective, at least, is that uh, a lot of it is focused on you know, educating consumers, whether it's buyers or sellers or just the overall population. Um, whereas there's a lot of people out there doing, you know, you know, sort of silly reels and we call them trendy reels, our, our yeah, social media person calls them. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you, you know, when you first realized like you needed to do content, uh, just to stay, you know, stay, um, present and how did you focus specifically on, you know, the buyer seller side of things rather than sort of agent attraction or, or those sort of things? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, ever since I got into real estate full time in 2017, right. And like, no matter how long you've been in real estate, whether it's one year, 10 years, or like you just got in today, like everyone's telling you, you need to be on social media and you need to do a video. Right. And so I heard that and I heard that and I heard that. And so I knew it was something I needed to do. Like, and if you scroll all the way back to 2017, 2016, like my social media was trash. Pretty much everyone's <laughs> is or was then. Right. Um, and so it's had lots of like, iterations and, and evolution and stuff like that. Um, as far as video goes in 2019, I made the decision that I was going to go all in on video and we were going to hire a videographer and pay him thousands of dollars a month to shoot content for us. And so I, my husband is my business partner. It's like, Hey, I've got this idea. Let's pay this guy thousands of dollars a month to shoot video for us. And like, you know, as, as, as I'm sure y'all know, there's no like direct ROI on video and on social media, but you do get business from it. And like, I couldn't necessarily quantify that for him. And he was like, well, this is crazy, but like, all right, I guess we'll pay this guy thousands of dollars a month to do this. And so we signed like a retainer, you know, agreement, whatever with him. And that was kind of our idea of like, all right, we're going to go all in on video. Obviously 2020 then came, the world shut down for a while. And I was like, maybe this wasn't a great idea. Um, and then 
as you know, that year progressed as 2021 progressed, like the short form video content became huge. And so that's what we kind of leaned in on, you know, with a lot of the, the same, you know, people that we all know in the industry that are doing kind of that talking head stuff. Um, I'm not a great storyteller, you know, like a Glenda Baker. I'm not funny, like a lot of, you know, people we know. Um, so it was like the educational stuff was like kind of my wheelhouse. Um, and, you know, I've always felt very strongly about that and educating consumers, you know, whether or not they buy with me. Um, you know, it's kind of like Tom Ferry gives like you could watch how many ever thousands of hours of of podcast and video on his YouTube channel. And yet people still pay him thousands of dollars a year to coach with him. Right. Um, and so that was my thing was, was like, well, I could do the same thing for real estate and give out all of this information for free. Right. And then people still need more. Right. And they understand, hopefully, that, you know, they need a, an agent to help them buy or sell. Awesome. Well, you, you touched on a lot there. You know, like ROI is one of the things we wanted to talk to you about. You know, we're both sort yeah. of people who are very numbers focused, analytical focused. Yeah. And, you know, that was something I think that we struggled with early on, you know, how, how do you see the return? Uh, I think, uh, you know, another mutual connection is, I'm sure you know Tyler Whitman from the the Tom Ferry world. Yep, we yep. Had, we had Tyler on a few weeks ago and we talked to him about that as well. And um, I think the general consensus, at least from our perspective, has been that, you know, it is hard to quantify. Um, yeah. And you can't necessarily say, oh, I, you know, I got that listing over at 123 Main Street because of the video I did on January 15th. You know, it's not, yeah. it doesn't work like that. But I think it's more name on brain recognition, you know, constantly seeing, you know, content from, from, you know, select people. And, and when it becomes time to make that decision, that real estate decision, you know, you, somebody's got a lot of market share in your head. Yeah, no, I mean, I would, I would agree completely on that. And it's, it's difficult. You do have people that call and say, Hey, John, I just watched your video on YouTube on ABC topic. And I'm calling you because I want to buy a house. Right. And it's, they're very specific. And, you know, then you can say, okay, well, that was a YouTube video and they're going to buy a house and I'll, you know, it'll be a $10,000 commission. And there's that ROI, but like you've probably spent way more than $10,000 on video and production and stuff like this. Right. So it's like, it's difficult to quantify. Um, you know, it's not like a Zillow lead comes in and, you know, you spent 30% yeah. and you get X commission. Um, so, you know, I think that the brand building is huge. I think that, you know, the name recognition, um, is is big. I think staying top of mind with our past clients and our sphere, right? So we get a lot of repeat business from them as well as referral business from past clients and sphere. And then agent to agent referrals. And you mentioned something earlier about uh, like agent attraction, right? And like for some people, like they are in kind of a coach role or things like that. But I've also seen people that kind of lean into that, like, I'm going to make content that I think agents want to see. And then they get calls from consumers that are like, hey, John, like, I'm not sure if you still sell homes, but um, I'm trying to buy a house. And like, could you help me with that? And you're like, oh, geez, like I was just out showing homes yesterday. But like, if you're only posting stuff about like teaching agents how to blah, 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 whatever, like then consumers may not like draw that line or understand because like they don't see every single one of your posts, right? With algorithms and all the things, like they see one in every how many, two, three, four, five of your posts. If all they see are your coachy posts, then like they may not actually think you still transact. Um, and so while my production has decreased in relation to my team's production, um, because I'm, you know, training and coaching them and stuff like that, um, I'm still selling real estate. So, you know, and I still want to generate business for the team. So like our, my content on Instagram, you know, won't change from that consumer facing type content. Yeah. I think it's important to, to realize that there's layers of leverage that you have there. And like you said, there's hours of content that's going to be consumed over and over again. And you don't yeah. know exactly why, like what video was going to work for someone else. Uh, but being omnipresent and always front of mind is the goal because you grew to 15 agents in a matter of what, that's five years, right? And probably a big credit to that is your presence and your brand. So a bunch of agents who are probably starting are probably asking you questions on like, wait, what was that process again with that buyer? Like, how does that work again? And then that yeah. starts the, the communication there. Um, and we almost take it for granted because when you're in it day and night, you forget that there's people who actually wish they knew what you knew, although you feel like there's so much more for you to learn. So yeah. there's always value to provide to the audience. But I think what you did really good at is you established a specific target market and you were very intentional with it, which a lot of people don't do. And that's how they probably get the, that whole thing messed up. Yeah, no, I think I think having that target audience in mind or that, that uh, you know, client avatar is very important, right? And 
especially for like a YouTube or something like that of like, who are you trying to target? What are you trying to accomplish? And then talking to that person, right. Mm. And thinking about like, okay, if I'm having a conversation with a client, what does that look like? What am I saying? You know, what are the things, what are their concerns, you know, and, and really talking to them because you'll attract, you know, more of that. So yeah. um, I think that's really important for sure. Yeah. And for someone who wants to do what you've done starting from scratch, what are some tidbits that you'd share with them that they would need to do to get there? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's what's so difficult now when you look at, you know, how many content creators there are and things like that, like, especially in the real estate space and people that are, are, you know, putting lots of money into to podcast productions and video production and stuff like that. You're like, man, like, I just thought I could like open up zoom and do a podcast and, and, but you can, right. So it's like, you have all these different levels of like being at a studio or doing it via zoom or whatever. Like I'm literally in my house right now and I have, you know, my sure mic and my camera and my headphones, you know, like, but you can also invest in a full studio and things like that. So I we're, think, a, we're actually in Kiro's basement. What? Kiro's, mother, <laughs> Kiro's mother's basement. Stop. Stop it. No, she's, she's cooking us meatloaf upstairs. She's such upstairs. a nice lady. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. Um, yeah, you said meatloaf? Meatloaf. Is that the meatloaf? <laughs> Ma! Oh, the meatloaf, yeah. yeah. Um, you guys are leaning into all of the worst stereotypes ever right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, completely lost my train of thought. I, I no, but, you. Like, you know, go away. There's so much content going on. I in... know you have to do your the laundry right now. <laughs> right? But... Oh, yeah. um, I told you, you don't mix my jeans with my white t-shirt. This is prestige um, worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> All right. Anyways. So, you know, but I think that at the end of the day, though, like you have to start somewhere. And I think one of my biggest things that I always tell people is unless you can find a videographer that is going to be able to coach you on what to say to talk to a consumer and coach you on the right, you know, hooks and all the things like you should probably start just shooting with your phone. Right. Yeah. And using the front facing camera or, you know, you can set it up like especially if you have an Apple watch and an iPhone, like you can look at the camera on your watch and then start it where it's the back facing camera. But like face a window, have some good light, use your phone, have a decent mic, and that can be corded or wireless, and just start making content about what you're dealing with with consumers, what concerns they have. Um, you know, something we've been talking about a lot lately is, you know, we have increasing interest rates that's impacting everyone. But like, maybe you just hop on and start talking about some wins your buyers have had. Because like, mm. there are buyers out there that are on the sidelines because they think that it's still always multiple offers and also high interest rates and also prices have increased and also all of these things. But like, how have your clients won and like educate just on that? So like two of my agents this week, we had a training on that this morning and they hopped on and I saw their Instagram posts where they're like, check out these things that like are opportunities in the market today. Hmm. Right. And, and shot an entire video on that. And they, they just did it on their phone after our training sitting, talking, you know, to their front facing camera on their phone. Yeah. Um, so get comfortable with that start somewhere. Don't compare, you know, your, you know, day two or, or, you know, level two to someone else's level 10 or 20 or whatever it may be like. Um, and you know, some content is still better than no content. Right. And so just start shooting more content, um, and, you know, interacting on video and getting comfortable with it. And then yeah. as you, you know, start to do it more regularly, then maybe you invest in a better mic then maybe you invest in time with a videographer, then maybe you convince your mom to put a podcast studio in your basement. Like <laughs> there's lots of things that you can do to kind of continue to level up your content. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you go shoot with a videographer and pay thousands of dollars and it sucks and you never post the video and you were super nervous and you don't want to do it again because it sucked, like you're probably not going to do it again. So just taking those baby steps, I think is very helpful. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, um, what I hear you, maybe the best way to sum that up is, is what we always say in our office is action is better than perfection, right? Yeah. Just, just take action. Just do it. And it's, it's like the same thing with a lot of things, right? The people who are hesitant to start prospecting or hesitant to start calling their database, just, you know, little yeah. small steps every day is, is so much better than, than just, uh, you know, not doing it. Or, or like some people just go in heavy and, and invest with all these microphones and the studio and all this stuff and then just never really do much with it. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. I think one thing too to get you, you comfortable in shooting video that I really like is the one-to-one -one video, right? So like sending a video DM or text message to a client of like, you know, I just got off the phone with you and your, your offer's been accepted. So maybe I send you a little video and it's like, here, like, congratulations, man. I am so excited for you guys. Can't believe you're buying your first house. Like, remember, get the, you know, money over to the title company and I'll call you again tomorrow to follow up to make sure that's happened or whatever it is. Right. And like start doing that to get comfortable talking to camera 
And like when you're actually talking to someone on the other line, you know, if I'm like, oh, this is John and I'm talking to John about his transaction, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable than like when that camera turns on, your palms get sweaty and you're like, ah, what I was talking about? Yeah. What was I going to talk about? Inspections. Ah, what about them? Yeah. Like, you know, that, that like communication is something that you already do probably on a pretty regular basis via Zoom and just phone calls and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. The, the entry, the level of entry is very, I'd say easy into the social. Uh, it's just really more or less being consistent and being active like you guys are saying. But on the flip side, what are things that people should not absolutely do? Like, I know you see those those agents that are posting regardless of their target market, but it's like videos that you're like, this should never be duplicated or replicated by anybody else. What would fall into that category? I feel like Katie's about to list a few things that I've yeah. done. <laughs> it's like, you ready? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest problem that agents have is our perception in the industry or like the industry perception and like what people think of us as an industry and as a profession. Um, part of that is because so many agents fail, right? Like it's like 87% fail in the first five years. Like, so, I mean, luckily part of the 13%, but like that's such a small window, right? Of like people that are successful. And so I think that we don't do ourselves any good in like posting like, you know, braggy posts about like selling homes and things like that. I, like um, I have a broker friend here in Houston that says like most people think that real estate agents drive fancy cars, sell a house, go to happy hour, collect a big check and then do it all over again the next day. Right. And that's like because for a lot of agents, when you go on their social, like that's what they're posting. And so like my biggest thing on like the proof of success Right. Like you do want to show that, you know, what you're doing and you're selling homes and that, you know, you're transacting. But like most consumers don't care if you've sold 200 homes. They just want to know if you can sell their home or you can help them right. buy a home. Um, you know, like especially over the past few years, like everyone's like, oh, man, hundred thousand dollars over a list. It's like, well, did you actually do that or yeah. was that the market or or was it the seller? And you coached the seller to do all these things to their home and it sold for more because it was well prepared. Yeah. And so like, I think you can brag about what you're doing, but I think focusing in on the seller story or the client story, or the buyer story is way more important um, because it makes it way more relatable. And so that's like my biggest pet peeve is like the Canva post. Like, you know, I go onto yeah. the social and it's just like, just listed, just sold, just listed, just sold. And it's like a Canva template over and over again. There's no personality and it's all just like, look at me. Mm. That's like, that's my one pet peeve. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's just, um, we just had a couple of those posts too on our. No, uh, it, it, yeah. Then. And I think I mean, and, <laughs> like, like, those are, those are fine, like sprinkled in, right? I mean, like yep. we have them as well. We make them for our agents, but like if all they're posting are the canned graphics we make for them, it's like, hey, I need to see more of you. People want to do business with you. So, like, you need to start telling people what's happening and, and sharing, you know, your client stories and stuff like that. I couldn't agree more. And I think you touched upon something really good there. I mean, if, if we list a home at $500,000 and we sell it for $550,000, $50,000 over asking price, right? Rather than just sharing with everybody, hey, we sold it for $50,000 over ask, why not share with them the story of, hey, there was multiple offers and, hey, you know, um, uh, what you did to really create that value, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we were able to what it means for them too. So it's like they submitted yeah. offers on 15 houses. So happy that they got this one excited yeah. with this for their kids and this, that, and the other. It's like they finally get the place called this home, whatever the case may be. It's interesting because, you know, we know uh, a competitor of ours who used to do that in the past. And uh, at first I'm like, what a cheese ball. Then after that, I'm like, that's actually really sweet. And I'm I, like, I catch myself. I'm like, no, enemy. <laughs> like, like we don't do that. Yeah. Um, but that's frenemies. That's, yeah, right. But people will connect with that if there is um like if they can relate to it somehow some way but they can't relate to it if it just says just sold or you yeah. know just listed um yeah just give, give the backstory you know why that one was different from from other scenarios you know how how the thing whole thing came about right because i don't know in a weird way that that's almost sometimes why people think like oh i can sell my house myself right because if they're just looking at a flat piece of marketing that says hey it was listed yeah. at five and sold for 550 you know, a lot of if I'm a seller I'm and I'm a DIY type person, I'm like, oh, well, you know, that was probably just the marketing, like Katie said, or, or just the market, excuse me, like Katie said. And I, I can do that myself, right? But when you share the story of actually the steps that you took to negotiate a better deal for your seller or, um, you know, how many other offers came in and why this one was the best or why this one stood out and the buyer was willing to do a, you know, use and occupancy and we were able to craft this perfect deal for yeah. our client and their family. Um, 
it just says so much more. So I think that's 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 some of my takeaways from from content is just how can we tell you we're great at what we're doing without, without looking douchey and <laughs> uh, without like telling you we're doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Show me your great yeah. agent without telling me you're a great agent. Well, and that's like um, Robert Mack in Irvine and uh, Orange County, California. He does that where like they have an entire case study and like they send out like an eight and a half inch by 11 mailer. And it's like before and after after pictures of the house, it outlines like, you know, painting, staging, this, that and the other. Um, and really just gives like kind of that step by step playbook of like, hey, for this one, you know, we, we could have listed it at nine hundred thousand dollars, but we listed it at nine fifty. It sold for this. And these are all the reasons why, right? And we can do this for you too. Um, and so I think, yeah, I mean, it just, how many times have you walked into a listing appointment and the house is ready to go and you list it the next day? It's like almost never. There's always stuff that happens, whether it's the seller doing it, whether it's, you know, you and your team doing it um, to prep a home or to get some staging or landscaping or something, you know, before it goes to market. So there's always, yeah. you know, a story to share. You know, I, I don't know why this thought came to my mind. Have you guys ever read Freakonomics? Years ago. Yep. So in the book Freakonomics, they compare having your real estate license with the KKK, right? <laughs> and it's it's kind of a crazy correlation, but between it, like the MLS is really like the secret language between them. And they said the same thing about the KKK, which is weird, right? But now the MLS- <laughs> I don't remember that. Um, it's clearly been too long since I've read this book. <laughs> Listen, I know it's on there. And if I'm wrong, this is going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure th they're talking about secret society. Yeah. And then they were talking about the MLS, real estate, real estate agents. So the MLS is that secret society almost, right? But now because it's been blown up with something called IDX and you have Zillow, which feeds through it and all that stuff, yeah. um, the agent loses all their secrecy in between communication, whatever the case it is. So agents now will resort to being a little bit more like uptight and just trying to be like, I'm really good. Like, believe me, I'm really top agent because they have no other yeah. value or secret to sure. share. Yeah. But what's trending and what's becoming more attractive to consumers who have access to everything is vulnerability and being vulnerable with the information that you're giving out, being able to supply it all without being attached to the outcome of if they're going to work with you or not. And people tend to want to work with you when you give them all the information for free, like you were saying earlier. So I forgot how I was going to wrap that all in. But I wanted to throw that in there before a question and that escaped my mind. Um, yeah, no, I think it's important to be vulnerable and... and not even necessarily as an agent or, or showing them how you can be vulnerable in the business. I think it's just, you know, to me, the social, the, the social aspect should just be, um, uh, I'm just thinking about another agent who's talking about this this morning. I'm just, his name is escaping me, but anyway, he was talking about why it's not a great idea to have two separate, um, yeah, social personal. pages. Yeah. One is personal, one is real estate. Just keep it all on your personal, right. And yeah. maybe make it a little bit more real estate focused. So people can get to know you personally and know that you work in real estate. They'll get to know you. You're vulnerable. They can get to trust you. And once they trust you, they they may want to work with you. Um, so just sharing with people, you know, your vulnerable side, I guess, and sharing with them yeah. that, you know, you're a real person. Yeah. No, I mean, people want to do business with people. And that's where, like, when you log on and see the Canva template graphics, it's like, you know, you've got to have some stuff about you. Um, and whenever, like, I teach classes or, or anything like that of, like, you know, what should a content mix be, be most of what we talk about is like your interests, your family, your goals, your, your stuff. And then like, we're like, oh yeah. And also like, you know, put some real estate stuff in there. Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, you're the brand and you're, you're who they're working with. So, uh, you definitely should be including personal stuff for sure. Yeah. Cool. At what point in time during this, uh, phase for you, did you realize that you had something here that was like, actually that you can make something big out of it, the social? Um, I mean, jury's still out, I think some days, um, <laughs> No, I mean, I think that it's it's one of those things that like, like joking, joking or not joking, like, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things that like, clearly it's brought us business, right? Both from consumers and I'll go into a listing appointment and someone's like, okay, so I watched your video and you said blah, 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 about lights. You said this about paint. So we're thinking about this. So we're going to replace this and bubble. And I'm like, all right, like this is easy, right? Um, so it's clear that it has impact. Um you know, I, I think it's one of I've those things that, that it's like by, about the lights, by the way. <laughs> and I, um, I, I wanted to hijack the video because I believe in that so much. Because it, it's frustrating when you walk in and there's like 14 different colored lights and like five different <laughs> floors in, in one room. You're like, what are we doing here, guys? You know, um, like, I feel like um, I feel like this is something that would go on in your apartment. I think I tried what, to change like your light bulbs in your apartment. Yeah, once. you broke my track lights. Let's um, talk about that. 
different hues. Hues? Yeah. Hue bulbs. Hue of the color bulb. color lights. Uh, different like a scale on the LED. Warm. One's yes. for funky time. Uh, no, it's just <laughs> no, the, no. They're just like all regular light bulbs, but like ones like bright white, ones like warm white. Yeah, mm. it needs to flow. That's how they do. All it. You're speaking color. my language, Katie. I'm sorry. Right. I, I, I took like, your he has story. No idea what we yeah. Mean. So you go on the appointment. <laughs> like, what about the red lights? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what's going through my mind. Jesus. Um, so you go on the appointment. People are referencing your videos, and they they and it's sort of giving you um, some segue into the the process. Is that where you were going? Yeah, with that? for sure. I'm gonna. Um, for sure. Yeah. I mean, here, see, I can change the color of my lights. I like it behind me. That's funky. That's awesome. So, but it's my office, so it's not actually that fun. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing fun really goes on here. Um, no, I mean, I think, I think as far as like social and content and stuff like that, like it's such a journey and that's something that like, you know, whether you're just shooting videos on your phone or you're shooting with a videographer or whatever it may be, like I'm constantly looking at ways that like we can add in different either like series or videos or content types or stuff like that. Cause it's like, I think that if you're not constantly like looking to innovate what you're doing, like you're going to turn around and you're going to be that broker that's like sitting in the corner. That's like, How, where do I fax my offer? How can I like type this, this <laughs> offer up or whatever it may be. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, things are just changing so frequently that like you've always got to be testing. I love short form video because it's like it's super forgiving. Like and with the algorithm, like most people don't even see your stuff. Like if I have, you know, 20,000 followers and 5,000 people see my post and like of those 5,000 people that saw the post, like not even all of them follow me, like such a small sliver of my followers are actually seeing what I'm doing. Like mm -hmm. it's just keep testing, keep trying it out like that imperfect video, you know, or, or whatever like post it, you know, it, it just, it just keep, keep innovating and keep trying. Let's dig in a little bit more about, um, what your process looks like. So yeah, obviously I can tell from the level of production that you're doing, you still have the videographer that you hired. Yeah. Okay. And they're full time. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, at times like this, when you're not actively filming content, like, right this minute what kind of things are they working on you know on a daily basis what other things do they do for you what's that yeah i mean like? so, so he he works for us um he works for another agent in our brokerage and then he does like uh freelance stuff as well you know so like we probably shoot you know a couple days a week like so i saw him yesterday um for i, I spoke at an event so he came to that and shot that and then like tomorrow we're doing a content day because I've got like some new shoes I need to unbox. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we're going to we're going to meet up to do that. Um, and then, you know, he, he's he shot some stuff with my team earlier this week. So like outside of that, he's just kind of doing other things. We've got like a content schedule that, you know, we run it on our end because we don't post everything right away and, you know, whatever. So he'll film it, edit it. Yeah. And then send it to you. And then you guys take care of the posting. And yeah, cool. Cool. So um, I find like specifically for this podcast, I get maybe it's because I'm super crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But how do you guys <laughs> yes. get on the same page with your editor about like, 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 for instance, if somebody views this podcast after it's done, I think there's cer certain things and certain takeaways that I think were really exciting and that could be really beneficial for people. But when somebody else watches it, they may have other takeaways. And sometimes what they give me as the final product, the short form, right? The things that we call real worthy, R-E-E-L-L, R-E-E-L, real worthy. Um, they may find like totally different, uh, you know, clips. So how do you guys get on the same page with like what you want the edited final product to look like? So for a lot of what we shoot, like we do community spotlights that he does those and like he's pretty good at like we're on the same page as to like what works for those right yeah. and like really like his artistic direction is way better than like me on that uh for short form like for the most part like if you're shooting a 30 second video it's just kind of cleaning it up and cutting out some of the pauses or ums or you know totally. thoughts between thoughts but um for like podcasts and stuff like this basically like if i'm shooting a podcast if i'm able to like if it's not live uh if it's via zoom or something like this all timestamp times that I think there was like a good moment. So like if I'm seeing the clock running and like right now it says 3446, like I would write down 3446. Yep. And then that way in the raw video, they know 
I want a clip out at 3446. And you do right? that while Otherwise, you're recording or afterwards? Yeah. So I'll just like, I'll just like look at the clock, write down 3446. So like I shot a podcast earlier. And so on theirs, we're going, you know, we're on Zoom and you say something. I'm like, all right, 3507. Yep. I'm like, all right, cool, great, awesome. And then um, I'll just basically send out over that list of timestamps to be like, clip these out for me. Um, alternatively, like, because we'll shoot some, like, say we go to a conference or an event and we're there and I'm like, yo, let's shoot this podcast together. Like, I'm not, I, I don't have a clock anywhere, right? Yeah. I don't know what the, the timer is on the camera. So I'll re-watch that, that MP3 or listen to the MP3 or, or watch the MP4, like the video file on my own at like 2x speed. Because, like, I'll remember the conversation. Like, oh, I remember when Kira was talking about the KKK and real estate <laughs> agents. Like, that's probably something that we want to clip out. Yep, definitely. Right? Yeah. And, like, so I'll, like, listen to it fast at 2x. So if it's a 30-minute podcast, that'll only take me 15 minutes of time. Or if it's a 60-minute podcast, it only takes me 30 minutes of time. And really, like, if I remember that was, like, you know, further on in the in the convo, I can, you know, skip through the first how many minutes that I didn't want to clip anything out. Sure. Um, but, I mean, like, we've worked together now since 2019, right? So, like, for the most part, like, he knows kind of the stuff if you guys are, are sharing if we're going to clip out something or yeah. yeah no i think that's really helpful feedback and honestly that's that's has been my conclusion just to start taking notes while you're doing it like the the good the good takeaways um yeah tell me a little bit yeah. more well, about and that's the alternative like as well like if you're shooting content or if you're doing stuff with a videographer like um we're we're going to do an event um early next year and so like i wanted a, a video like a not a hype video but like a video sizzle reel type thing from last year with testimonials built mm -hmm. in and so i was like very specific i was like so you made a sizzle for me last year i want it to be the same premise but then i want it, the entire sound to be voiceovers of people talking about how great the event was and this is what i want it to be and i want you to mix up to go you know person 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 not just one person talking the entire time and it needs to flow this way and like I guess where I'm going with this is like, don't be afraid to be specific with what you want. Cause like, it's better to do that on the front end yeah. and yeah. like get back what you want. Then like be like, Oh yeah, I'd like a sizzle reel. And that's all the direction you give. And then it comes back and you're like, Oh, but I wanted testimonials. And then like they put one testimonial, like, you're like Oh, but I wanted multiple people. And it's like five edits later, your videographer's like going to murder you. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, sometimes I am very specific on what I want, but I like that. No, that's that's helpful feedback. Um, and as I was as you were talking, I was literally writing down a timestamp of of something that uh, I want them to to edit in. Talk to us about so if if somebody looks at your page, or at least this was my perspective, you know, they see a lot of different, um, like we said, educational sort of informative videos about the sale process, the buying process. Um, how do you usually schedule that content? Do you do it all on one day? I know you said you have some content you guys are doing tomorrow. Does, you know, do you block out X number of hours? Do you change up your outfits? Do you change up the scenery? Do you script and use a teleprompter? Do you sort of go off the cuff? Dig into that a little bit for us, just so um, people can, can uh, this get This is, a by little... the way, very selfishly for John because he wants to know. No, I, <laughs> like, somebody to know. Yeah. somebody <laughs> messaged us, that, us with that question yesterday, actually. That's like why you have a podcast, right? To get like all of the things from You're all like, of the tell people. Tell me everything. No, yeah, no, good. I'm like, so tell I'm me more about, you know, the growth of your team. And people are like, we're really talking about that a lot. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm trying to grow my team. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, They're like, I'm having a problem with this specific agent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, as far as content goes, um, for the more educational, like short form stuff, we batch it out, right? So like everything that you kind of w w just asked about, you know, my process is kind of from, from start to finish is like, I'm less technical than a lot of people and I'm more technical than a lot of people in other ways. But like for tracking my content, I basically have a note on my phone. And when I see a video that I like online or I have a conversation with a client or a team member about something real estate related, I'll put it in that note. So like it, it's literally just titled short form and then it's like one through, you know, 50 of different ideas. And like on my thing, it's like escalation clauses, question mark, how to select the best offer on your property buyer love letters, buyer contingencies, jumbo loan limits, what's a jumbo loan, typical closing costs for a seller, what's a net sheet? Like, and these are just questions that it's like, how many times have you gone over a net sheet with a seller? And you're That's like, true. all right, on this side of it, we have this. And on this side of it, we have that and blah, 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 blah. So like, I'm literally just going to break that down of like, if you're, you know, listing agents not going over a net sheet with you, find a new listing agent. And like, then I'm going to talk about what that is, right? Or whatever that may be. So 
I just write down conversations, ideas, content that I see that I like. And I, I just write down like what I just named off or like literally videos I'm going to shoot tomorrow um, of like things that I read in a magazine, you know, things that I'm seeing on in men. Like there are so many places out there that give you content ideas, right? It's just like, you're like, this is really boring. Like net sheets are not exciting topics, but like me telling you that like you should fire your agent because they haven't gone over this with you, like is a little bit like more, you know, hooky or whatever. Um, yeah. So I write all of that down. I don't script out my videos. Um, I basically now my videographer and I are like kind of to the point that like, he'll just say like how you determine list price. And I'm like, all right, this is what I want to say. And then I'll like look up the camera and I'll be like, is it on? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So if you're looking to price your home and I'll like go into like whatever that, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, so for the most part now, like I kind of have an idea of like, okay, these are the two or three bullet points that I want to do. Um, and then we'll basically just shoot. Like I always try to shoot at least 10 videos at a time. Um, my goal is always to shoot like 30 or 40. Right. Cause it's like, if I can have that buffer, like in January I got COVID. Right. So I was out for a week. Right. And so I wasn't shooting content. I wasn't going out and seeing clients, but like I had 30 videos sitting in my Google drive. I could, I posted every single day. And like, unless you knew me and, or were a client that I told I couldn't meet with you, like you didn't know I had COVID cause I was still posting every day, you yeah. know? Um, and so stuff happens. And so that's why, like why I always want to have a buffer of content. Um, if you're newer, I would recommend at least bullet pointing out what your points are going to be. I wouldn't recommend scripting it. Cause like when you read from a teleprompter, you can see, you know, yeah. the eyes move or sometimes even like the entire head move or like, you know, one of those and like awkward, awkward facial expressions. Yeah. Um, so it does take, I think a lot of effort to be able to talk on a teleprompter and like practice to talk on a teleprompter and like read the sentence and then say it like it's actually, you're speaking it. So I would just recommend writing down the ideas. So like for determining list price, for example, like, okay, you're going to look at comps. I would write down whatever those bullet points are so that you can keep your thoughts organized. And if you have a yeah. good videographer, they'd be like, all right, this is what you've written down. And you'd be like, all right, here's the real sentence. Yeah. Really good. Okay. So what I heard you say there was, um, when you hear, you know, when you have good ideas for content, you're putting notes in your phone, right? Um, you're not, you're not creating a script for yourself. You're not using a teleprompter. You're just using basic bullets. Um, and um, what, how many takes would you say you're doing for each one? Usually, are you getting it done in one take or are you getting it done multiple takes? Um, yeah, I mean, some are like one hit wonders, right? That I yeah. like just sit down and I like nail it. And then some I'm like stuttering and like, you know, mm. going over work, like, it's like, and I just have to, I have to leave it. Right. So there's some like video topics on my list that have been on there for like months. And I'm just like, I can't, it's just like wire fraud. Like, I just can't think of anything interesting. <laughs> I think um, that's helpful for people though, because a lot of times, you know, they'll they'll say, "Oh, I want to sit down and 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 do some content on X Y Z topic," and and you know, uh, it's like my friend over here. Sometimes it takes him, you know. I'm a hit, one hit wonder. I, I don't know about you. Yeah, uh, yeah. one take. No, yeah, <laughs> one take, Tony over there. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's it, there's also a me like a method behind it too. So it's like how many times you post in a story and what you have on a story versus what you post on your actual like what is it called a grid? I'm a little yeah. bit new to this. What's the formula to be able to like how many do you have to send out? Is it one a day? I know the stories they say it's like ten a day minimum required or aim for. What's the formula to be able to get that reach out there? Um. I mean, there's lots of like people will say different things, yeah. right? And I think Chelsea Pites is one that has a video out that she's like, basically like, so-and-so says you should post three times a day. And then she like cuts to like looking at the camera from a different direction. She's like, blah, 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 says you should post five times a day. Da, 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 says that you should have 10 store. And like, there's so many contradicting things of like how yeah. the algorithms work and all that. Um, Broke Agent Media um, put out a, a white paper, like ebook thing on like Instagram. And like one thing that I do think helps is priming the algorithm, right? So that means like going in and, and DMing and leaving meaningful com comments and, and having conversation with people, posting your post and then continuing to do that for a little while before you leave the app. Because then it shows, you know, the app and the algorithm that like you actually interact with people and like they're messaging you back and like it it kind of like primes the algorithm to then push your contact content to them. Um, so I think that's, that's a good one. Um, and Eric, broke agent, is just like a wealth of knowledge on Instagram and like creating a community and, and following and stuff. 
But for me, like I almost always have a story on my story, right? So mm. there's no like I always have eight stories on my story. Like I try to not be that person with like, you know, those really little dots because there's so many stories up there. Like because yeah. at a certain point people are just like, I don't want to see you anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's not interesting or, or whatever. But um, I always try to have a story up and I try to post on my feed at least once a day. And so normally that's at least one reel a day, if not, you know, more than one post. But, um, you know, I know that there's people out there that have that way more dialed in and and scientific of this is what I, I do and this is why I do it. Um, but for me, if I post a story, my thing's going to show up, you know, my, my face is going to show up on the left of your Instagram when you log in. And if I have a post on my feed every single day, then if, you know, you're someone that's looking to, to send me business or, you know, you're looking to buy or sell with us, you're seeing that I'm a consistent poster. Like how many times have you pulled up someone's Instagram and their last post was in like 2019? You're like, oh, are they still in real estate? Like they said that he was a good realtor, you know? So um, just the consistency I think is important. Yeah, I think that's important. It's definitely helpful because that's something that we didn't consider or take into account because uh, being born in different kind of uh, um, coaching backgrounds, they focus on one thing, not the other. And uh, this happened to John a couple of times where some of his buddies would be like, yo, is everything okay? Like, <laughs> I haven't seen you post in a while. Like, this business yeah. is good. And he's like, bro, I'm having the best year of my life. What are you talking about? He's like, oh, I just don't, I don't see you posting anything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, or they would, they would compare me to another agent that they know. So two of us. They don't sell side. any real estate, but yeah. post They'd on They'd be like, dude, he's posting all day long. Like, he must be blowing up. Is everything okay with you? Like, you haven't posted in, I don't know, three months or something. I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, we sold, you know. Is what you see 50 what's times true, the so. amount of homes is that person and but it's it's their their perspective just yeah. based on you know you could be anybody you want on social right <laughs> well so. and that's that's yeah i think there's like a stat that like it's like over 70 percent of like millennials and gen z would like rather do business with an influencer than you know whatever <laughs> and so that's where like the the jokes of the the meme accounts like posting you know top producer and like you know here's me in my BMW or in my whatever, or like flashing my watch or, you know, and it's like, well, like he actually doesn't sell any real estate. Like, yeah. so you've got to pepper in that some, you know, and, and post like to stay top of mind with people. And it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but, but also with the, like, the market changes, I do feel like the people who got lucky by doing that without a track record will fade away and will be known yeah. who got lucky. And then the people who were like focused on their skills, taking advantage of it and at being diversified, like diversifying their yeah. lead gen and aspects of it will survive. And that will be very clear um, in three years from now, the people who are lucky and the people who actually earn their seats in that, um, which is awesome because it's like the ferries, Matt Ferry, Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, like you're associated with coaching and you're like going in there. It's not like that was the foundation or social was the foundation of everything. You had a track record, you built it up, you had the credibility to be able to push it out. And it's almost like, you know, they say money magnifies who you are. Social media magnifies who you want to be. And then so you're able to like make it even bigger. So that's pretty awesome. Um, what are some th key things that if you had to do it from scratch, you would, you know, do it all over again, what would you do differently knowing what you know now about social and the impact you have on it? So, I mean, I think that that's difficult to answer because like, obviously things change so significantly. And like in the time that I've been in real estate, like, you know, at a certain point in time, like IGTV was really big on Instagram. So like we did long form video on Instagram and it got like thousands upon thousands of views. Right. Yeah. Um, and now you post something that's less, that's more than 30 seconds and no one watches it. Right. So, um, you know, I think that it, it's, it's just been like quite a journey or whatever. So like, I, I think that I, I don't know that I necessarily would have done anything differently. I probably would have gone back to like 2016 and like hit myself, you know, <laughs> up the side of the head for like the, the just sold post. But like yeah. John, similar to your story, like I had people that like when I didn't post it just sold that week, they're like, hey, you good? Still selling houses? I'm like, yeah, I sold four. You sold good, four bro? this week. When I was like, and they're like, oh, okay, I shouldn't see any just sold posts. And I'm like, yeah, because yeah, I've been too busy selling houses to make a, a stupid Canva post. Like, yeah. Um, so <laughs> they yeah, get I mean, in your head. That, gets in your head. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, like I think that I probably would have, you know, tried to get into like the storytelling and the focusing on the client more and like less of this is me and more of like this is what like, you know, the, the hero of the story isn't me, it's them Yeah. Um, sooner. But like, I mean, everyone goes through something like that, yeah. you know, before realizing like what their what their thing is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Speaking of things, uh, I went viral today. On uh, We had a post with a guy named Ed Kaminsky. I had 8,000 views. Uh, we were in the agent meeting. My phone just kept going. Zzz, zzz, zzz. I yeah. know 8,000 sounds like nothing, but it's big for me. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. I was like, zzz, zzz. I'm like, oh, look at this. I didn't um, see that one. Yeah, it was like a 30 second short form. Uh, had a level it's up like, from I six figures. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. Really like, I, I wasn't even trying to dish you, but I, I, I have to go check it out. You have to go like it right now. No, uh, Katie, I wanted to touch upon one thing that you said earlier. Um, just to give you, I think, a little bit of feedback. You said that you do educational informative because you don't think you're funny. I think you're hysterical. Yeah. And the only thing I would say for you is maybe consider doing some of those funny ones because uh, I think you've got a great sense of humor. I appreciate that. Um, one of my one of the things my coach keeps telling me is because like I'm not like that excitable of a person, right? So like an example would be like I went to go get fitted for my wedding dress, you know, back in 2015 or whatever, and like you know you try on all these dresses and like you know blah blah, blah whatever, and like I was like I think this is the one, <laughs> like I like it, like let's 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 do it, and the the lady's like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> like is this the one? Do you love it? And I'm like, yeah, it's good. And she's like, do you, but do you love it? And I'm like, I, 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 it's good. Yeah. Like let's, let's, how much is it? Like, let's, let's, you know, put down the deposit or whatever it was to, to get it re reserved. And like my best friend was with me. She's like, you need to say you love it. You need to tell her you love so it. You I'm like, it. I love it. She's like, oh yeah. You know? And I'm like, so she's like, tell like, your face you're excited. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's good. Like fist bump, you know? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, he, my coach is like, you should do something of like, you know, you're funny, but it's a dry sense of humor. So it should be like you just being like unamused by things that are like actually hilarious or you being like, this is the perfect house or like whatever it is. And I'm like, yeah, I just, so my videographers made me do some, like, um, we did one that we just made fun of me. And like, if you know me, like it was like, I drink matcha lattes. I take tennis shoe pictures. Like, you know, I do these, I take selfies at the gym. That's another thing that I do on my, on my Instagram story. Right. So it was like, breaking down all of those things and like the agents on my team, you know, doing all of those things to make fun of me. And so we've done a couple of videos like that, um, that were kind of like my idea and then his execution. So like, we'll definitely do some of those, but like, that's not, I'm not like Chris Benjamin or like Derek Gregory or someone that like could like make that my shtick. So. Yeah. Well, I don't think it needs to be your for forefront or your focus, but I think, uh, mixing some of that in definitely shows, shows your, uh, funny side. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I'm in a similar position as you. A lot of times people are like, are you actually excited? Cause like what we're talking about right here was actually a pretty, pretty exciting thing. And I'm like, yeah. All right. But like, what's next? Like we gotta, you know, we gotta keep going. It's the industry that we're I'm in. excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The industry that we're in makes us logical, not emotional with decisions. So it's like, I'm getting LASIK and all the reviews for the doctor that's giving me LASIK is like worst bedside manners, but it's like, he did a great job. So I'm like, all right, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't want him talking to me. Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. Like, I don't care. Just fix my eyes. Yeah. Um, that's that's just transactional that is transactional so we need to become more connected to our eq to be okay with that um cool awesome. that was informative i by the way um <clears throat> the for freakonomics book i knew he was written, gonna look this up yep it's written by stephen d levitt and uh, uh stephen uh dubner we're uh, not disputing the author <clears throat> is the kkk thing actually in there it's a thousand bro my memory is so sharp you know how accurate yep how the q klux klan uh, uh like a group of real estate agents it's on uh, chapter two holler all right. Chapter two. He, he yeah. can't be he can't be wrong. So awesome. Well, Katie, thank you so much for uh spending some time with us today. I think people will find this super informative. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that that definitely look up to you uh on the social media front and a lot of other fronts, of course. Um any uh what's the best way for people to reach out to you, to connect with you? Uh would that be through social? If you don't mind just sharing. Yeah, for sure. So Instagram would be the best place. Um, and it's moved me to Texas. Um, M O V E M E T O T X would be the best place to, to DM communicate. Awesome. And for referrals, can you repeat your service areas one more time? Yeah, we are in the greater Houston area. So we service about an hour outside of downtown Houston in all directions. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Again, I think a lot of people will find this super informative. Really excited to have you here and uh, really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me.